Well, thank you. And before I start my talk, I also want to thank the program committee for selecting our poster for this oral presentation. You've heard the title. Let me rephrase it a little. I will focus on triple OJ decay and an unambiguous observation of this process. Here's an outline of my talk. I will say a few words about our experimental setup. I will show photoionization of neon ions near the K-edge, and I will talk about multiple ionization mechanisms. I will, do, uh, I will present some results on multiple photoionization of carbon plus by single photons, and I will discuss multiple OJ decay processes and demonstrate that we really observed triple OJ decay, and I will end with a summary. Here's an outline, a sketch of our experimental setup. Uh, we produce ions on, a, on an ion source platform, accelerate the ions, let the ions pass an analyzing magnet which selects uh, ions of a given mass and charge, and we transport the ions into this region where they interact with a photon beam from a synchrotron coming in here, and in this so-called merged beams section, uh, Photons interact with the ions. We observe photoionization, and the photoionized products are separated by the second magnet, the demerging magnet, from the parent ion beam, and the ions are detected in a suitable uh, detection unit. And I want to point out that we have uh, put a great deal of effort into suppressing background in, these, uh, in this detection of ions. Uh, the parent ion beam is collected in a Faraday cup inside the magnet. The photon beam passing through here is collected on a photodiode. And by measuring the, the geometrical overlaps of the two beams, we can then really determine absolute cross-sections for photoionization into different final states. The whole experiment is pretty big. Uh, the, the whole thing here is about 15 meters long, and the reason for this is that, we, that these magnets are really big, and they accommodate masses up to 50,000 mass units at 2.4 keV singly charged ions. And of course, they have long focusing lengths, and that makes the whole thing so long. The whole setup was assembled in a collaborative effort of our group in Gießen with colleagues from Hamburg, Frankfurt, Berlin, and Heidelberg. The energy range that can be covered here with this photon beam is about 250 to, in the future, 3 keV. So we can look at K-shell processes. And uh, the first experiment where we looked at K-shell um, excitation and K-shell ionization was with neon ions. This has been possible before. 15 years ago, already in Japan, people have measured single ionization of neon plus, neon 2 plus, and neon 3 plus ions. We have repeated this experiment. These are our results, and there's one difference besides what you just notice here. The, the left side, is our, these are just ion yields, and we have measured absolute cross-sections uh, in megabarns. Now, the processes that we see here um, are, let's pick the neon 1 plus here. We excite the neon 1 plus ion in the K-shell, and uh, well, neon 1 plus has just one vacancy in the, in the L shell. We excite the K shell and just bring one electron up to the L shell. So the L shell is now complete, and we have a vacancy in the K shell. And this intermediate, highly excited state can decay by different mechanisms. And the easiest thing that can happen is, or the most probable uh, decay process that can happen, is the single OJ process. And so after this Auger process, we observe a neon 2 plus ion as a signal, and um, the normalized signal gives us the cross section. We have not only looked at single uh, resonances, we've seen this before, uh, we have looked at the whole spectrum uh, all, all the way across the uh, K shell ionization threshold, and uh, so this is single ionization. And uh, clearly, this signal here arises from excitation of the K-shell and subsequent single OJ decay. 
in this line, in this spectrum, we see double ionization, and here, triple ionization. And clearly, processes like double OJ or triple OJ decay would explain the occurrence of these peaks. But it is also possible that there are OJ cascades that produce these triply ionized neon 4 plus ions. And uh, since the main topic of this talk is the triple OJ decay, we will now look at another example where we can really unambiguously say um, the triple ionization peak has been, uh, can only be seen because uh, there's a triple OJ decay. Um, but I want to mention in this context the OJ cascades that can produce triple uh, ionization of uh, carbon of neon plus are all ro also quite complex and they involve four electron OJ uh, processes. Now, how can we find an unambiguous case for triple OJ decay? Well, we look for a process where one where well there are four uh, electrons which interact with one another. One electron falls into an inner shell vacancy and three other electrons have to be ejected simultaneously. That's the process the, we want to see. And uh, clearly, we need a minimum of four electrons. And uh, this configuration would do it. Uh, four electrons in, the, in an L shell and uh, no electron in the K shell. And this, this um, state can decay by one electron falling down, three electrons going out at a time. Unfortunately, such a system is a little hard to prepare. Well, we have seen it's possible with uh, neutral targets to, to have a double K vacancy. But uh, since we work with ions, and an ion beam target is uh, dilute compared to a gas target by a factor of 10 to the 8 to 10 to the 10th, so we couldn't look for the double uh, K shell excitation. We looked at single K shell excitation of carbon one plus ions. This is a part of the product spectrum for single ionization. And what we do here is we start with carbon one plus, two electrons in the K shell, three in the L shell. We excite a K shell electron to the L shell. And when this uh, decays, we can observe uh, individual resonances here in the, in the ionization cross-section. I want to point out the, the resolution in this, uh, in this experiment is 16 milliEV full width half maximum band paths, band paths, so we can measure the natural line width of these peaks. So what do we uh, see? Well, again, we have looked at the whole uh, energy range. Clearly, uh, in the spectrum that I ju just showed, which is this, is, uh, again, we have single OJ decay populating these C2 plus products. Um, we also have looked at double ionization. We go from carbon one plus to carbon three plus via K shell excitation. And clearly, this has to be produced by double OJ decay. So again, what did we do? We start with carbon one plus. We excite the K shell electron. We produce an excited uh, carbon one plus ion with the K shell vacancy. And this can decay by single OJ decay uh, and produce carbon two plus. Or we do a double OJ decay and we produce carbon three plus, and these processes have been known and observed a long time ago already. Now, if you want to see a clear signature for triple OJ decay, uh, we have to look at triple ionization of carbon one plus. We did that for the dominant resonances in the spectrum, and here I just show single ionization, double ionization, triple ionization. We see the triple ionization, and uh, well, all these uh, resonant states here have this configuration, 1K vacancy. And uh, with the resolution that we have in the photon beam, we can clearly identify which intermediate state has been populated. This is a doublet D and a doublet P state, uh, 1S, 2S squared, 2P squared uh, configur configuration. So here, clearly, we see single OJ decay. This is uh, due to double OJ decay. And in the triple ionization, we have to have uh, triple OJ decay. Well, one can think now, is it, is it really unambiguous? Let's look again. We think we see this process for the production of carbon 4 plus. Uh, clearly, um, a triple OJ decay would produce um, the final charge state. Uh, 
And one has to make sure that there's no other mechanism that would pr uh, produce carbon-4+. And uh, one could think about absorption of two or more photons. Well, we use a synchrotron, so the photon beam is not that intense. And uh, when, when you uh, absorb one photon, the next photon to absorb is not resonant, so the probability to absorb two photons in such an experiment with a very dilute ion target is negligible. So only one can be resonant, and that, that's the, why the probability is so small. Then another question could be, are there cascades? Are there possible cascades of OJ, OJ processes? Well, when we uh, observe a carbon-4 plus ion in the end, both electrons that are left with the ion are in the K-shell. A cascade process would at least leave one electron in the L-shell. We don't see it, so that is not a possibility. And I can also rule out things like uh, uh, absorption of a photon, stripping off two electrons, and then in a, in a residual gas collision, another electron could be stripped off, but we measured that also. Probability for that is negligible. So we clearly have seen evidence for uh, triple OJ decay uh, in, uh, in, a, in defined terms of the carbon-1 plus ion with the K vacancy. Um, since we measure absolute cross-sections, we can provide branching ratios for single versus double versus triple OJ decay. I also mentioned where we, can, we have measured the natural line widths of these resonances. So from the natural line width, we can conclude uh, what was the oscillator strength. From the oscillator strength, we get the, the transition rates. And since we have the ratios between the three uh, decay processes, we can provide absolute individual decay rates for these different OJ processes, single, double, and triple OJ. I mentioned that also in the triple ionization of neon 1 plus, there are very complex four electron interaction processes necessary to explain what we observe, but I didn't go into the details. Well, and I hope you saw the poster today. If not, it's too late now. And uh, well, at this point, I thank you for your attention and for your patience. <laughs>